E3 2015, aka that one time Nintendo used puppets for their game showcase. Oh. Oh, simpler times. I don't really think this is much of a hot take, but this was one of Nintendo's weaker E3 events in my opinion. Some solid games all around, but nothing much in the way of new announcements. Need I remind you, this is where they announced Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I still don't think I've recovered from that. One of the bright spots though was the announcement of the newest in the Mario & Luigi series, a crossover with Paper Mario, Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. Dude. That's such a good idea! I know I just said I wasn't the biggest fan of Dream Team, but I was still ready for whatever this new adventure had in store. Crossovers are inherently really exciting. And the name Paper Jam? Aw oh man, even the name is perfect. The potential for this is immeasurable. The important word there is potential. Crossovers are just one of the most exciting things to happen in the video game world. You take two good things, you put them together, you get one really good thing. That's basic mathematics. But that's not what we got here. At this time, the Mario & Luigi series was riding high after Dream Team, and the 3DS in general was a console that was simply exciting to own. There were just so many great games you can play on it, a very stark contrast to when Dream Team released when the handheld was just getting out of its initial sales slump. Paper Mario, on the other hand, different story, but one that you're all familiar with, I won't bore you with the details. Sticker star bad. Yes, we get it. But it is important to this story, I promise. What was once a franchise filled with life, energy, original characters and stories, became a sterile version of its past self, resembling New Super Mario Bros. more than Paper Mario. So with this new crossover on the horizon, which Paper Mario are we gonna get? Well, we already know the answer to that question. Now we know Paper Jam as the final original game in this franchise, and despite being excited for it when it was new, I just couldn't bring myself to complete it. This is going to be my first time going through this game from start to finish. For some reason, back then, I couldn't get past the halfway mark. There's gotta be a reason for that. Oh no, we're being invaded. All right, well, two games in a row, we are still lacking the bros yelling, Nintendo! Nintendo! So that's a shame right off the bat. On the offset though, things are looking pretty good here. Mario and Luigi's art style may not be as pronounced as it was on the GBA and DS, but seeing the paper characters interact with everyone else, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I bought this game for. Oh, and once again, it's still weird. While the game is known as Paper Jam in America, it is known as Paper Jam Bros in Europe. Why? It didn't really make much sense with Dream Team Bros, but at least there, the Dream Team are the bros, the bros are the Dream Team, that's fine. Paper Jam Bros is three words they threw together and called it a day. I don't understand this. One day, while Luigi and Toad were doing some spring cleaning, they come across a special book that, once opened, unleashes a paper company's worth of creatures from within and scatters them all across the land. This includes a bunch of structures, toads, Goombas, and other typical enemies. I can never look at a paper bob the same way again after Origami King. No, I'm not ready to talk about it. Princess Peach, Kamek, Bowser Jr., Bowser, and of course, Mario. Shenanigans ensue. No Paper Luigi though, and I know exactly what you're saying. Paper Luigi would have been perfect for this. It makes so much sense. And you'd be right. More on that later. Our main goal at the moment, per Paper Peach's request, is to save all the Paper Toads. Simple enough. But soon after, our real motivation for the rest of the story presents itself. Bowser steals Peach. Times two. Huh. <sighs> Honestly, as much as it's gonna sound like a cop-out, this is kind of the entire plot. There's no original villains, you occasionally have to save some toads every now and then, you work towards rescuing both peaches, and by the end, you take out both Bowsers. That's it. The Koopalings do show up again. Yay? I don't dislike the Koopalings, in fact, I would say I'm a big fan, but when they're thrown in because they couldn't really be bothered being creative, their presence is pretty annoying in my eyes. This was a similar issue in Color Splash as well. Admittedly, some characters do make their series debut, like Nabbit and King bob which is kinda cool, but overall, yeah, this story is really bland. Humorous at times, usually when Paper Mario is using his paperness, that stuff's pretty good. Uh, the Year of Luigi gets a mention, a one-line mention, that was really cute. There's this one scene where Paper Peach escapes her cell by walking through it. 
that's probably the best part of the game, but otherwise the humor, much like Dream Team, is pretty subdued. We still get a bunch of gut punches to Luigi throughout though. Boy gets his own year and he is still the butt of everyone's jokes. That's not fair. Dream Team may not have been a storytelling masterpiece either, but at least there we did have an original villain with unique characters to interact with. That is non-existent in Paper Jam. And, well, we may as well get this over with. Bland is kind of how I would describe this entire adventure. Missed Potential is, unfortunately, the true name of the game here. There is so much fan service that could be pulled from both the Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario franchises, but the final result we got barely has anything that made those two series so much fun in the first place. How did you screw that up? Before Paper Mario enters the story, the battle theme is a remix of the one from Superstar Saga. That's pretty cool. Paper Mario and Friends coming out of a book is kind of a reference to Thousand Year Door and Super. Um, at some point Bowser's castle goes way up into the sky, which did also happen in Paper Mario 64, but I don't know, these are a bit of a stretch. Call me selfish, but I wanted more. Return to the Bean Bean Kingdom and give Popple a more pronounced role. He has yet to be seen since he just ran off near the end of Dream Team. Maybe bring back classic partners for cameos, or maybe even the Star Spirits working with an ultimate power would totally fit right at home with Paper Mario. Or better yet, crazy thought, something entirely new without needing to defeat Bowser and go through the most generic of locations like grass, desert, island, snow to get there. All those block people from the previous two games? Gone. The Elite Trio? Henchmen that were created exclusively to this subseries? Nowhere to be seen. Ah, oh, but Starlo's here. Having less to do with the plot than ever before. The disappointment here with what they could have done is pretty vast. And I still can't get over the lack of Paper Luigi. That is totally bizarre. His inclusion would have been perfect. He is the only one out of the two pairs of brothers that can speak full sentences. There you go, that would have made the game 10 times funnier. Apparently, him not being playable was due to the developers wanting to stick to a three button control scheme, one for each character, because four buttons would have been too difficult. I don't know, should we, sh should we tell him? Regarding simply its crossover appeal, Paper Jam very much wants to be like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle or Professor Layton vs Phoenix Wright, games that combine elements from both series in an attempt to satisfy multiple types of audiences. But in reality, Paper Jam is more like Crash Purple and Spyro Orange, games that are trying to sell itself on its brand recognition above all else. And you never want to go full Crash Purple and Spyro Orange. This may be marketed as a crossover, but make no mistake about it, this is just another Mario and Luigi game, lacking all of the original flair that made the series special in the first place. Except this time, Paper Mario's there. In name only, but he's there. It's about all I can give it. But I will say, as disappointing as that aspect is, there is still a lot more to this game than just that. Regardless, we are five games into this series, a lot of what's worked in the past still works now. Running around and doing some simple platforming and getting into action command based combat is just as enjoyable as it's always been. There's also no extra side scrolling gimmicks like in the last two games, the gameplay style that you start off with is the style you play most of the game with. There are some notable additions though, there's a really helpful dash which is really nice Nice because the worlds are otherwise super big and pretty barren to explore. There's a lot of special moves that you can activate by pressing the three bros buttons in order like this one grabby move, going over gaps with a paper plane, nice little throwback there, I will admit, and drilling into the ground so you can climb up walls and collect, collect, collect beans. All five of these games have beans, you couldn't think of anything else? It only really made sense in Superstar Saga. That's what the title of this game should be, man. Not Paper Jam Bros, but Paper Jam Beans. From time to time, there are also these Rescue Toad missions that you can take part in, and... Man, I, I don't know, these feel really unnecessary. They're not as big of a pace breaker as all of the previous game's tutorials, but it does suck when you're trekking along but you can't continue because, oh, we gotta stop and do some mini games to progress. They're okay at best, but every time I got into one, I just wanted to get back to the main game. 10 plus hours in, the toads are still running away from me. Why? I'm on their side. And then there's the combat where Paper Mario really gets to show his stuff. Nothing really exciting on the Mario and Luigi front, you jump and you use your hammer as your main forms of attack with plenty of options for bros moves. You have no doubt played at least one of the previous four Mario and Luigi games before this, you have played this one as well by proxy. 
The fire flower has been fixed though, so that's a positive. Finally, the series can go back to triggering my early stage arthritis. One of my biggest issues with Dream Team. Overall, the new lineup of attacks that we have is pretty solid. They all serve different purposes too, so while technically they do get stronger the later on you receive them, I was still pulling out the attacks I got early on in the late game, so that is definitely a success. Listen, I love Bowser's inside story as much as the next guy, but really, a lot of the different moves in that arsenal got pulled out mostly if I just wanted different buttons to press at that moment. Also happy to report none of them use motion controls. Definitely do not miss those. So yeah, it's mostly the same for the two bros but I still like what's on offer here. But easily, the star of the show here is Paper Mario, showing off a brand new copy mechanic where you can stack multiple Marios on top of itself to power up your attacks. He can also float for some reason. Okay, it is all a bit weird since, again, this has absolutely nothing to do with the games Paper Mario is from, but it does spice up the gameplay just enough to keep things exciting whenever it's his turn to make a move. He also comes equipped with a lineup of not bros attacks, but trio attacks, more cinematic affairs that require all three characters to activate, and as you would expect, usually dealing a lot more damage if performed successfully. Ultimately, this all makes for a very fun battle system. It's no longer one repeat system with the bros and a second, fresher system with Bowser or Dreamy Luigi that makes the repeat system seem like it needs freshening up. Here, it's only one, and it's a good one at that. It's not all perfect, I feel like the enemy tells, indicators that tell you which characters are gonna get attacked, are harder to distinguish than ever before, which leads to taking more hits than I felt were justified. This was one of the things the earlier games did so well, but really, that's not that big of a deal. Overall, it's still really fun, but a bit slow when it comes to some of the opposing attacks, if anything. You can also no longer customize where your final experience points go whenever you level up. This one is definitely a weird thing to remove. Leveling up does happen at a super constant pace for all three characters, so that's nice, but not having that extra little bit of customization that the previous four games had is a confusing choice. How I would describe it is the way Paper Jam utilizes three different characters is really fun, intuitive, and engaging. But again, the way it specifically uses Paper Mario is not. Sometimes he is nothing more than a cheerleader. And we also can't fondle him like we could with Luigi and Dream Team. Give the people what they want. Put Paper Mario on the touchscreen and let me fold his creases for him to make the paper plain. It sounds weird when you say it out loud, but admit it. It would be pretty fun. Oh, but of course, if you thought that was the only battle system in this game, do I have something to show you? Of course, we had to have some other big gimmick to have an additional battle system, no matter what. While the previous two games had giant battles that were slower and required you to rotate the DS and 3DS 90 degrees, here we have giant paper craft battles. Thanks to Toadette and a bunch of the toads that you rescue along the way, these massive cardboard beasts get created for you to ride atop of and go to war and they're just kind of okay. In these encounters, you run around a big 3D arena, ramming into and jumping on top of multiple enemies, all of which uses up some of your stamina, and to regain stamina, there's a rhythm minigame that you take part in whenever you desire. Each battle also introduces a new cardboard character to control, equipped with a brand new mechanic, like Papercraft Yoshi being able to use his Papercraft tongue. So no two encounters feel that much alike, but I don't know, man. These do nothing for me. Similar to the Toad Rescue minigames, these feel pretty mindless. They come off as distractions for the sake of variety and nothing more. We didn't need something like this to keep the adventure interesting. The game itself was doing a good job of that. Guys, Paper Mario is in this game. We gotta have some battle gimmick that's kinda like paper. It's definitely a mindset carried over from Sticker Star. Like those Toad missions, they're not terrible, but they're pretty unnecessary. Do you, you get it? Tear? Terrible? That was a paper joke. As a whole though, the bright side on the entire game is the pacing of it. It is way better than Dream Team. All of that whack tutorial garbage is gone, and we also have the ability to fast forward cutscenes. Oh, thank goodness, this is the first game to introduce that. It is extra important since the story is as lackluster as it is. Good to know it's not a forced punishment to sit through this time around. As a result, you end up constantly being on the move. Rarely ever are you stationary. Well, except for Paper Mario at least, he's always stationary. That, that was another paper joke. Please don't leave. 
it ends up being a bit of a toss-up between the two 3DS adventures, which one did I have a better time playing? Dream Team certainly had better set pieces and more unique characters, but Paper Jam was more enjoyable with the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. The side content though is definitely lacking, I will admit. Doing every single Toad Rescue mission is optional, there's a few quizzes that you can partake in which snatch you just a few items and nothing else. You have the typical bros move challenges as well as boss gauntlets, which does lead to a special final boss. <laughs> Oh, fancy there, but that's about it. Nothing substantial to really sink your teeth into. It's also a noticeably shorter adventure than Dream Team as well. Took me seven hours less to get through this one. That really puts into perspective just how much a Dream Team was those damn tutorials. The reason I didn't beat this game all those years ago was due to that lack of original content as well as the crossover fan service not appealing to what I wanted. But giving this game a second go, coming right off the heels of playing Dream Team, Paper Jam's positives shine a whole lot brighter. Oh, and uh, just in case you thought things would pick up by the end of the game, let's just go ahead and squash that right now. No. Thanks to all of the paper toads that you end up saving, you're able to travel into the sky to Neo Bowser Castle. Yep, it's the same exact name they used the last time. You got some pretty basic puzzles, you end up chasing Nabbit for like 30 minutes, that takes up most of your time here. There is a Mega Man styled boss rush with all of the paper craft bosses, because you know, I did say I love those, I couldn't wait to fight all of them again back to back to back. And after taking out both Kameks in a traditional boss fight, as well as all of the Koopalings, the final encounter is upon us. Bowser and Paper Bowser. Phase 1, nothing really too special here, both Bowsers at once, you got plenty of strong moves in your arsenal to handle them easily, no big deal. Phase 2 though, when the good music and all of the 3D modeling budget comes in, this is the true final battle. Shiny Robo Bowser. And honestly, it's an enjoyable fight. Although the pattern is pretty easy to figure out, chip away damage to get the weak spot exposed, then go all in on those strong attacks before the shield comes back and you gotta do it all over again. And it also kinda goes without saying, this is the fourth and technically fifth time the ultimate battle in these Mario and Luigi games is an altered form of Bowser. We've done this before, nothing here is special. With enough bops to the head, Bowser blasts off once again from his castle. The heroes manage to send Paper Bowser back into the book he came from, and with that, it's time to celebrate. Both Peaches give a kiss to their respective Marios, which is nice, but then they both kiss Luigi at the same time! Brings a tear to my eye, the true hero finally wins in the end. We cut to a parade! That's it. I blinked and then the credits started rolling. Just as bland as it was getting here, the ending, it, it just happens. Though I guess ending a game with the parade is another Paper Mario reference. But man, I am I am really stretching here. I got nothing else to work on. You do unlock a sound test though, so that's kind of cool. Oh, you put him here? So yeah, that's Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Definitely better than I remember it, but it's just kind of there. Upon its release, Paper Jam's reviews were positive, however, sales were below expectations, performing a lot weaker than the four games before it, selling better than only the two 3DS remakes that released after it. Which is a bit of a segue to discuss the poor state Paper Jam sent Alpha Dream into. While they crafted a very fine game, they clearly lost a lot of their mojo from their earlier games that put their name on the map. Sure, Sticker Star suffered from a lot of that too, but it's hard to tell if Mario & Luigi's lack of creativity is anything more than a coincidence. Rather than giving it another shot with a new original story, a bunch of original characters, and a bunch of wacky things the bros could be doing, the company decided to go back to the past and remake Superstar Saga instead. With the assumption on my part that they were going to try and remember what made that game so memorable all those years ago. People may be a bit indifferent to the art direction, but I thought the Superstar Saga remake was really well done. Regardless, nostalgia couldn't save this one. It did not sell well at all. But hey, the Switch was on the horizon. Maybe the lessons learned and the money gained from this remake will help this franchise's jump to an HD console. That's not an outlandish thought. I mean, Fire Emblem kind of did that as well. And then we got a Bowser's Inside Story remake instead. And the company filed for bankruptcy soon after. Damn. It sounds cliche, but you hate to see it. Alpha Dream became a name that was worth caring about because they made a bunch of games that Nintendo handheld gamers truly loved. And they also made a handful of Hamtaro games. I cannot let that go unnoticed.
This year, I wanted to dedicate time to playing through the entirety of the Mario and Luigi series, and now that we're finally at the finish line, I can happily say I did exactly that. Outside of those new side modes in the remakes, but they weren't really good anyway, so who cares? Because of this adventure I went on, I was fortunate to see all of the game's highs and lows in such a short amount of time. And looking back on it all, man, Mario and Luigi is such a good series. Paper Mario may have been thriving in those early years, but these games, these are the ones that carried the torch that Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo left us. These are the games that put our heroes in some of the wackiest of scenarios you could possibly imagine. Wrapped up in humorous stories, really engaging bad guys, super fun gameplay, it's awesome. Beans, babies, beans, Bowsers, Oh no, even more beans, some dreams, and did I mention beans? A whole lot of beans, just a whole bunch of beans. And also Paper Mario was there for a second. These five games may have lost some of the creativity as we got to the end of them, but they still did a lot. Mostly with beans, did I mention that part? Alongside Luigi's Mansion, Green Mario finally had a strong enough spotlight on him to make him the endearing character that we know today. I would argue that is the biggest net positive of them all. And many of these games' accomplishments and failures will stay exclusive to history here. Papa will remain MIA until the end of time, I promise you that. These are definitely still adventures that are worth experiencing, and by doing so, the Mario and Luigi series will be remembered forever. And, well, since people are going to ask anyway before we sign off, I'd probably just rank all the games like this. Maybe a bit different than how you would do it, but hey, that's the sign of a good series. I would love to see how all of your rankings stand compared to mine. If you watched this retrospective from beginning to end, I want to really thank you for your support. Knocking out a 5 RPG long series nearly back to back to back certainly takes a whole lot of time, but a lot of you out there seem to really enjoy it, and I appreciate that support. And for Alpha Dream, the company responsible for these games, well, I got one final thing to say to you. <clears throat> I still, still can't do it. I was trying, I was practicing, still can't do it, but truly, comes from the heart. Thank you.